How's it going guys? Angus here from Makers Muse. So as some of you will know, I am back in Sydney. I'm actually staying with my parents at the moment. And behind me, you can see my mum's garden. It is phenomenal. And she has a few secrets for making it so beautiful, but one of them is this, which is her worm farm. So basically, there's little wormies in here, and they make worm juice, which is disgusting, but really good for the plants. However, this thing's quite a few years old, and one of the problems is the clips that hold the legs on have started to go missing. So I thought as an awesome project, we can get some of the existing clips and reverse engineer them using Onshape, and then 3D print them out on my Fabricator Mini. Let's get started. So log into your Onshape and open a new document, and first we're gonna start a sketch on the top plane. And click OK. So what I'd like to do first is I get an idea of what the profile looks like. So it's got this little U shape, uh, it's got a thin wall, and it's got a little sort of clip hook kind of thing there. And what I'll do is I'll just sort of draw that out using lines. So there's a few ways you can do it. I think what I'll do is I will draw the outline, then offset it into the middle, and then add the little tooth. So always think about what you're gonna do before you start drawing. So, line, 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 escape. Also, do remember to change your units before you start uh, drawing. I'm working in millimeters, uh, and you can also work in inches if you prefer. All right, so now I think it's about time to just start adding some basic dimensions in. So I'm going to work out how wide the part is. We've got 12.5. Okay. So we've got, let's say 12.6. 12.6. And overall height of, I'd say 19 millimeters. And then the little lip bit, that will, if I can measure it. That looks pretty good. So now we can do our offset. So I could draw another set of lines and offset it like that. However, Onshape has a very powerful offset tool. So here we can go along and find this one, select offset or slot, and we just click the lines that we want to offset, find out what our wall thickness is. So it's about three millimeters wall thickness. So we'll just enter three. 33, there we go. And that's starting to starting to look like our shape. So we need to add a few smaller details in now. Most notably, we need to seal off the shape. So get another line, line here to here. Okay, so next we need to add that little tooth feature in. So a common mistake people make when they're dimensioning things is they uh, accumulate dimensions. So that's That would be where, say you've got something here, 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 you dimension to here, and then here, 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 here. And that's a good way to compound errors because as you're measuring things, you're not gonna be 100% accurate. So you really wanna measure from a single point, if you can, outwards, um, and that way you're gonna minimize your mistakes. So with this little tooth profile, sure, I could be like, uh, how high is it from the, the wall there, and measure and dimension it from that, but instead, and actually this is easier, is you can just dimension it from the outside wall. So I can dimension it like I did with the original wall, original wall's three mil, and if I grab the tooth, it's 4.2. So what I'll do is I'll draw my little tooth profile in. I think it has a tiny flat, so let's just add that. Escape line. And to dimension it, I'll click our outside wall and then the edge of the tooth. What did I say? 4.12, I think, 4.2. 
And just need to work out the width of it now. Three. So, three. Three. Good old Aussie internet. Really struggling with the internet at the moment. It's extremely slow. Okay, so we just need to cap off our part at the top. So it's starting to look like a little profile. There's just a few details we need to change. So notably, we need to remove this line in here because that's not what we want for a nice strong extrusion. A nice successful extrusion, rather. So we want to select the trim and trim that away. Also, the hook is not like it is in the original part. Uh, on closer inspection, it looks like a small radius at the end, not a flat. However, I will leave the flat for now because we don't need to make it exactly like this. And long story short, adding a radius will change how far the hook extends. So you can use... No, let's just do that. Forget it. Let's use construction lines to accurately dimension the length of the radius. So let's delete. I'm just making it up as I go. So, okay, so we've got a point there. And we'll make this point 4.2, like it is in the part. However, as I said, this profile has a slight radius on the end. It's slightly rounded. So using the fillet tool, which creates a little radius, if I selected that, um, these two parts, you see what I mean? See what it's doing? It's rounding it off, and then you're losing that length. So, there's a way around that. What we're going to do is we'll add a, I think, like maybe 0.2 millimeters, something, a small, small radius. And select accept. Ah, no, we want to go, we we'll remain in the sketch. Okay. We'll get rid of this dimension. And instead, what we're going to do is create a new line here. All right. So, to dimension to the edge of the radius instead of the original point where the two lines converge, we want to get this line we just made and turn it into a construction line. All right, deselect. Deselect, clear selection. So we've got a construction line, and construction lines are really useful for dimensioning things that are usually difficult to dimension. So what we're going to do is use this construction line to make it tangential to the fillet. So click the line and click the fillet. And it always sort of starts suggesting what we might want to do. But if we go along here, they're very, very well laid out. It tells you what exactly, uh, shows you exactly what it's going to be doing. Tangential, circle, line. Bam. Don't know what that sound was. So now what we have is a very powerful way to exactly dimension to the edge of our fillet instead of the where the points converge on the line. So what we'll do is select uh, dimension tool and dimension to that construction line 4.2 so you see it was 4.144 whatever you may think I'm being pedantic but it's very important to, to know how to do this sort of thing for when you do need to dimension to stuff like that and uh, in bigger parts it does make a bigger difference obviously this is a small radius small difference big radius big difference all right, and there's one last thing we need to do for this little hooky bit is we need to make it, you know, make it sort of symmetrical. So we'll collect, select those both two lines and we'll make them both equal in length. So just go along and find the one we want. Pretty obviously it's the equal sign. Bam. However, it stuffed this up. <laughs> so this line obviously did not have a horizontal uh, constraint, so let's make it horizontal. Ooh, I didn't like that. Interesting. Let's get rid of that. So, okay. I'm not quite sure why it wouldn't let me, but okay. Let's make a horizontal constrained line and let's just select those two points and make them coincident. Cool. So one thing to note 
yeah, again, my internet connection is absolutely shocking. On shape is on the cloud. So sometimes it looks like I'm doing dumb things. It's because my mind's thinking too quickly for the CAD, uh, res for the response of the CAD software. Um, so in that case, what ha was happening is the line wasn't constrained to horizontal and something else was going along with the rest of the parts so it couldn't order resolve. So I just got rid of it and drew a new line that was horizontal. Simple as that. So we've got our part, everything looks good, but it's all still blue. Everything's not resolved in space. Why is that? Well, it's just floating in midair. If I move the part around, la 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 la. So simple as this, let's move it down to our origin, which is down here. Bam. Also, I thought. So construction lines, you don't really care about them being constrained exactly. Ooh, it went red. That's over constrained. I don't know why it went red. I don't know why it over constrained itself. So that's step back. It didn't like me doing something with that construction line. So, yeah, sometimes software like this, like, or SolidWorks especially, can auto-resolve things that result in over-constraints. So it means you've got more than one answer for the same part, and it's too many. It's like it's got too much information. Uh, you want to avoid that. So you want just enough. You want it to be black. So this is the one last remaining part that is not fully constrained, and if you just watch this entire video, you can tell me what's wrong with it, right? I know I'm just talking to myself. It's not horizontally constrained. So if I move it up and down, blah, 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 it's going to do that. So we'll click, click it and click horizontal. Wait for the server to catch up. Why? Why? Why can't you automatically resolve that to be horizontal? Horizontal. I don't know, maybe it had something else selected at the same time. So that's our part, it's almost exactly the same as this one. The only thing we're missing are the little fillets. So let's go back into the fillet tool and add these little fillets on the part. So click, 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 click. Oh yeah. Again, <laughs> working too fast for the, for the poor software. Uh, it's very hard to tell how big fillets are without a fillet gauge. So I'm just gonna guess that at uh, 2.5, maybe. 2.5. I might make it a bit smaller because the 3D printed part won't be as strong. Yeah, I'll just make them two. So I'll go back and edit the other one. That'll be fine. Cool. Two. Excellent. So that's our little clip, simple as that. So side bit of trivia. Uh, how this, how would have this been manufactured? You know, is it injection molded? Well, it could have been injection molded. It could have been extruded. So that's where they have a die in the shape of pretty much what we've just drawn and they force plastic through it and it comes out in that shape. But having a close look at it, there's little sort of witness marks of where the tool has pushed out the part from the injection mold. So there's also damage on it, but I think that's possibly from being used. So this has been injection molded, though it could have been extruded and then cut to size. I would have thought extruded and cut to size would have made more sense, but maybe they couldn't get the right sort of plastic. This, is, this feels like um, something maybe with a bit of, it'd probably be ABS to be honest, with maybe a bit of filler to be a bit stiffer, like maybe a bit of um, glass fiber. But yeah, so that's how that's been made. We've got the profile for ours, so let's give it some thickness. Simple as that. So we're done with our sketch, select our sketch, and we want to go to extrude. And we just get our trusty calipers and take it to the part. So I'd say 30 mil. So 30. And there we go. Looks pretty good. And that's our little worm clip. So let's save this off as an STL. Export. Format. STL. Binary. Millimeter. Again, if you if you're drawn in uh, inches, change it to inches. Units are drawn in millimeters, so millimeters. Resolution. I'll just leave it as medium. That's fine and we'll download the part. So here we have it, here's one of the original clips 
And here's the one we've made on the Fabricator Mini. The quality is phenomenal off the Fabricator Mini. I'm so impressed with this little printer in PLA. It is super good. And you notice I printed it in bright pink. Basically that's so they don't get lost again because little black ones seem to disappear quite easily. But let's see if they work. So here we have the, the edge of one of the legs. And you see that little lip there? That's what this little bit down there is designed to clip into. So it should clip in like that. So that's the original. Of course it works. Let's see if this one works. How about that? It even has the same sound. And you can see right there, if I can focus, you can see right there, a the little lip is clicking underneath it beautifully. So there we go. Super easy, super practical project using the lowest cost radar on printer you can currently buy. So thanks for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed this short educational video on 3D printing using Onshape and the Fabricator Mini. As you can see that even though it's a low cost, very low end printer, you can still make functional items and you know fix things around the house with very little effort. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more future 3D printing content and make this news, feel free to subscribe. It helps me out a lot. And also, if you want to support the channel, I've got my Amazon affiliate links down below. You can use them every time you buy something like filament, like PLA filament for your Fabricator Mini. Use the affiliate link and it helps me out a lot. Also, you can do a direct donation through YouTube. So thanks for watching, guys. See you again shortly here on Makers News. Catch you later.